Hello and welcome into the Sun Devil Source post game show. I'm Sammy Miller alongside Chris Cartman at the Los Angeles Coliseum following Arizona State's 42 to 25 loss against number six USC, which makes the Sun Devils now one and four on the season. The last time that happened was 1976. But Chris, ASU showed a lot of improvement tonight. What are your initial takeaways from this game? I agree on offense in particular. I right, came out uh, really strong. Uh, had uh, several touch, couple touchdowns, a field goal. Actually, had a penalty that probably um, kept them from scoring another touchdown in the first half. I thought Glenn Thomas, from a play calling standpoint, was much improved tonight. They got the ball uh, more quickly to their receivers. Uh, Geo Sanders was involved. They threw the ball to the running back more successfully. Uh, I thought their their offensive line really fired off the ball and did a good job blocking. They really took it to USC in the trenches from the outset of the game much better than I had anticipated because USC had, uh, had some pretty strong defensive performances, including against Oregon State. Um, ASU's defense, though, uh, really from the outset, struggled to get off the field and opportunities that they really should have. They missed sack opportunities. Uh, couldn't get Caleb Williams to the ground when they were in the backfield. Third downs, um, you know, even third and longs, they were still not able to get those accounted for. And I think in the second half, they, they, they started to not have as much success offensively. And then also uh, some of the protection issues started to emerge as USC brought more pressure. Those things had a cumulative toll that I think ultimately uh, ASU is just not good enough to be able to handle at this point. Now the Sun Devils offense, they came out strong and hot. They scored on three possessions in that first half. So what factors do you think contributed to that? Yeah, um, a really smart play calling. I think the, the challenges that ASU's had throughout the season is they're holding the ball too much in the pocket with Emory Jones and they're not able to get as much uh, first and second down success in the passing game when they're not taking some higher percentage throws. So tonight we saw a lot of quick game. Uh, they, they had a, a pass immediately into the boundary to Andre Johnson, which got him five yards. He threw to Geo Sanders in some bubbles. They, they threw the ball to Xavion Valade. They got Daniel and, and Gata involved. They went to five wide multiple times for successful plays early. And then what you saw was they were in third and four, third and five. They were able to convert those. They sustained drives. They got into a good rhythm offensively. And then they felt kind of good about themselves and what they were trying to do. And the offensive line had really great blocks. Uh, there was a bunch of them. Darius Henderson, Isai Glass. Uh, ben Scott had a pancake though on a great block. They ran the ball. They had good balance in the first half. It was almost equally distributed. Uh, their 215 or so total yards. It was almost half run, half pass. Uh, so I would give them like an A minus for their first half performance offensively. Second half they came out two run plays right out of the gate. Uh, then they were in third and long. Then they had to punt, and then they never really got into a rhythm again. Now, like you said, that second half offense wasn't really there. So what do you think were the main factors to that? They, they, they needed to stay a little bit more aggressive still. I thought they got, they kind of went back to some of the things that we've seen earlier in the season uh, where they weren't kind of firing off the line of scrimmage and, and they weren't getting that same amount of sort of push at the point of attack as they got in the first half. Um, and then I think the, creatively, they probably needed to still do a little more screens USC started to bring a lot more blitz pressures, so identifying that by hitting them with some screens to the running back or some, some uh, tunnel screens coming inside that would have given them some opportunities. A lot of the stuff that they got in the first half they weren't able to sort of replicate, and so I think uh, they're probably going to wish that they had done a few things differently in that half offensively. Now the defense on the other hand for the Sun Devils wasn't as strong as the offense. They continue to struggle on those third downs time and time again. What do you think contributed to that? Well, Sean Aguano said that they have dirty eyes in the backfield, and Caleb Williams is a phenomenal quarterback, um, one of the best I've ever seen in my life covering college football. His arm strength, his elusiveness, the ability to get out of the pocket, make off-platform throws, uh, to not get sacked in situations where he felt like he was definitely going to go down. Uh, what happens is his play extension ability, where he has the ability to move, but then still maintain the ability to throw the ball, is excellent. And what happened is some of the ASU receivers, they were actually looking for Caleb Williams rather than looking for uh, the receivers. And when you have some really talented guys like Mario Williams and Jordan Addison uh, and, and Brendan Rice running around all over the place, 
that's a recipe for disaster. It kind of cut up with them in the long run. They have had issues throughout the year at getting off the field on third and long situations. And tonight, I think they only had one or two stops. It's not nearly good enough against a team like USC. And Chris, after the game, Sean Aguano spoke to the media. He said, of course, he's not happy with the loss, but he did see a lot of improvements from the team. What do you think those improvements were? Yeah, I think um, just first of all, their physicality was better. Uh, they didn't have as many mistakes, especially sort of mental errors, procedural issues, first and second downs in the first half. Some of it caught up with them, though. Later on, they had personal fouls. thought one of the pass interferences was kind of a borderline call that maybe shouldn't have been made. Um, but, you know, again, some of the protection stuff, the third down stuff, and also kind of not sustaining their offensive push into the second half, those limited them. And Aguano was, you could tell he was kind of emotional after the game. Uh, he was really frustrated. He said, we'll get back at 2.30. I'm going to be back in my office at 6 a.m. working, giving everything that I had, can. We're going to continue to strive and make progress. And I thought that they were much improved uh, over the last week's game against Utah. And Chris, the Sun Devils are heading back home to Tempe, but their schedule doesn't get any easier. They're facing a ranked Washington next Saturday, so it'll be inter interesting to see what happens there. This is all the time we have for today's Sun Devils Source postgame show, but don't worry, there's a lot more coverage coming soon on SunDevilsSource.com.